The one thing about my life right now that I'm not liking is my body. I'm changing my life. I'm changing it for the better. I'm getting healthier. I've joined the gym, making myself a better person. I'm so. a changed person already. I mean, I've still got a lot of weight to lose, but I think I've done a pretty good job. Yeah. Can you believe that those two bozos are actually this bozo? Because watching those back, I I cannot. I, uh. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jacob. Back at you with another video. And today is probably the most long-awaited video I have ever posted on my channel. Not only for me, but ever since I posted this on my Instagram a few weeks ago, a lot of you guys have been asking me when this video is coming out. To premise this, since those last videos, I have lost 45 kilos. That's nearly a person. When I actually sit down and think about how much weight 45 kilos is, I can't quite comprehend that that's what's not on me anymore. I have been procrastinating over filming it for the longest time. I go through a roller coaster of, yes, I'm going to film that because I'm feeling motivated. And then I'm like, no, I don't feel ready to put that out on the internet. At the end of the day, the one thing I've always come back to is I need to do this for me. I need to post my story for me. And also because I know that if there is one person out there that this video can help, then I'm robbing them if I don't post this. If I don't tell my story and I don't give the opportunity to someone else to kind of kickstart their journey or help them along their journey, then I'm robbing them of that opportunity. My subconscious just eats at me for that reason. So I'm posting this just as much for you, that person, you know, I obviously can't see who you are, but if you are there, if you're scared of the idea of losing weight, if you don't feel comfortable in your own skin, if you've got stuff about yourself that you want to change, but you don't know where to start, so if this can help one person, then I feel like it's my moral obligation to tell my story and post it. So that's what this video is. It's going to be a massive one, so... If you guys are here now, stick through it with me if you want to. If you don't, then I really appreciate you watching up to this point. But yeah, let's dive straight into the, this my story and let's do it. So growing up, I was never a fat kid, right? I was never a skinny kid, but I was never like a fat kid. I was never like bullied at school about being fat. But through primary school, I was always like the chubbier one of the group. But that never mattered for me because growing up, I was a swimmer. I was swimming since I was about six months old. I started swimming lessons and I loved it. That was my thing. You know, I could literally swim. So the fact that I was chubby didn't matter because when I was in the water growing up, I could move. That didn't help when I went to school and all of my friends were runners and footy players and soccer players and tennis players and stuff. So going through primary school, my figure was never a problem unless it was one of those cross country or athletics carnival days or in PE class. Other than that, I was generally a really happy kid. And I think that's really important to note because I know that a lot of you out there might not have had similar experiences going through primary school. If you were not a skinny kid, you might have had different experiences to me, but I'm, I, I just want to sit down. I want to be honest and I'm going to tell you my story to hopefully you can kind of resonate with bits and pieces of it. I wasn't bullied as a, as a kid. And I think I said that before, but that's kind of really important to me because when I started thinking about this and kind of jotting down the story, I guess, I kept coming back to the fact that I was never actually picked on for being bigger than everybody else. It was just kind of a thing, but it didn't matter because I still held my own weight in the pool. I wasn't like obese. I was just kind of chubby going through primary school. And moving towards the end of primary school, I played water polo. Water polo was my sport. As you guys, I don't have my jumper or anything here. I played for Tasmania. I made the national squad and we went to Adelaide and I played, you know, I was one of the chubbier kids in the team, but you know, I still managed to make the team. So for me, it didn't matter. My appearance wasn't, it never held me back when I was growing up and my parents were always really supportive of me. That was cool. But then looking back, once again, looking back at these photos, I now realized that I did used to subconsciously look out of the corner of my eye and think, okay, yeah, I am the biggest person here. Okay, cool. That's fine. We'll just that's just the way it is. Because it was. That was just the way it was. It just wasn't, it wasn't a big deal. And I guess that's kind of the point that I'm trying to get across for this. It was a thing, but it wasn't a thing. And that was fine. The end of that summer, so the end of 2013, or how, about halfway through 2013, I got extremely ill. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to delve into my sickness story right now because that is a massive topic in itself. I actually made a full half an hour short film about that experience. That was my college major. So if you guys want to see that, let me know down in the comment section below and I can definitely share that with you eventually. But if you want me to sit down and tell you my story with inflammatory bowel disease, I can most definitely do that, but we're not going to, we're just going to kind of skim through that. The only reason I bring that up is because during that time I had to stop everything because I was, I was in and out of hospital for over a year and 
they to try and fix me, they were putting me on extreme diets, like extremely high fat diet, blah, blah, blah. And I had to stop all sport. I wasn't going to school. I was in bed. I was playing video games. I was eating junk food. To no fault of anybody, not even my own, but because I was sick and I hated everything, that was the first time that I was legitimately unhappy, I guess. And in that time between that national season and, you know, a year and a half later, I had put on about 35 kilos. So that took us to 2014. The second half of high school, I was legitimately unhappy in my body for the first time. I kind of started neglecting people in my life because I felt extremely self-conscious about the way that I looked and the fact that I couldn't participate in PE because I would be last in everything. I was that kid who was last picked for everything because I couldn't run. I built up so much denial behind it at this point that I didn't actually care because I've just blamed it all on the sickness and I was like, well, what, I couldn't do anything about it. I was sick. I put on all this weight, which to a degree is true. And even to this day, there's nothing I would have done differently because once again, that, that this whole experience and this story and the reason I'm sharing it with you now is because all of these experiences are what's made me who I am today, if that makes sense. That period of time when I was sick is actually when I started making YouTube videos. Um, the first videos which are very, very deep in the YouTube world. You know, I fell in love with the platform and I never fell out of love with it. YouTube has made me who I am to this day, so, you know, I owe so much gratitude to you guys who have been here from the beginning and have stuck with me and will continue to stick with me into the future. During 2014-15, I truly secluded myself from everybody and I just started packing on weight. I remember going between hospital visits and it was like a three, maybe two, three, four week period between hospital visits and in that time I had put on 15 kilos and I distinctly remember my mum and the nurse having a conversation saying you know he's putting on all this weight we don't know what to do and they're just like well he needs to stop eating shit food and video gaming and stuff but I was not in any state of mind to change anything because these doctors couldn't help why should I help myself I have never said that I had depression or anxiety through this time but the more I kind of delve into and learn about mental health I definitely think there was 100% aspects of that during this time and I very much think that that contributed to my weight gain. I'm not blaming it on that, I'm just putting that in there because I know that for some of you guys that will be a serious factor in say why you may have gained weight and maybe why you can't lose that weight but it's okay because you're not alone in that and yeah I'm just putting that out there because I know that some of you might relate to that. So then moving on from that period of time I was reaching like the peak of my weight gain and it was halfway through 2015 and this is kind of the climax of my story, right? And I will try my best not to get emotional during this next little bit, but bear with me. Halfway through 2015, we went on a family holiday to this day, still one of the best family holidays I've ever been on. We went to the Gold Coast, um, stayed in Surface Paradise, stayed in a five-star hotel, massive penthouse for like a week and a half, and it was amazing. <sighs> I was 15 and we were going to Wet n Wild, the water park, and oh my god. <laughs> I remember there was this, there was one ride, I don't know if you guys, how many of you are from Australia or know the Australian theme parks, but at Wet n Wild there is a ride called the Aqua Loop. There's like the four tubes and they go like down and over and you're at the top and you get dropped. I was really excited because that ride was being built last time I was up on the Gold Coast and this time it had opened and I was, you know, really excited to ride it with my cousins, we were up there together. We lined up for the ride and I remember we got almost to the front of the line, so you know how lines like go like around like this. And we got to the last swivel of the ride and I look here and I remember just kind of standing there because we are in line for like an hour and I looked up at the sign. <laughs> on the sign it said minimum height 110 centimeters, maximum weight 120 kilograms and I kid you not I have never felt more like I have been hit by lightning and I have been in a serious car crash. That to this day is the most scared I have ever been in my life. Looking up at that and going I don't remember the last time I was in hospital and got weighed, but I remember when it was, I was somewhere around 115 kilos, and that was a fair while ago, and I know that I've continued to probably put on weight. The next, what was probably only 10 minutes, felt like three hours waiting to get to the front of the line, and I just kept staring. I was went, I worked my way to the back of my like group. As you progress forward, I say that that was the worst moment of my life when I saw the sign, but the worst, like, Post, like the worst moment of my life was I looked up and there was an attendant at the front of the line who was standing next to a set of scales. So not only was the maximum weight on the sign, they were weighing people to make sure, which t totally fair, that's regulation, but at the time I 
was so petrified that I was going to be over this weight limit and in front of all my cousins, I wasn't going to be able to go on a ride because I was a 15 year old who was too fat to go on a water ride. Even to this day, those that to think about that, to think of myself being in that situation, petrified for my life, because how was I supposed to approach anyone to say I was too heavy to go on a ride? My cousins went through and it got to me and I remember I got up on the scales and I looked straight up at the sky. I'm not religious at all, but I looked up at the sky and I did, I probably prayed in that moment. And then the bloke said, all right, you're good to go. And I remember I looked down and I saw 119.6 kilos. I was 400 grams off not being able to go on this ride. 119.6 kilos. Like, that is ridiculous. I was 15. Just to think about that now. It's like a massive like milkshake of emotions to think about because I was obviously so relieved. I was also horrified that I weighed that much. Like I suppose when I was praying, I was thinking, oh no, I've actually lost weight, but no, I had put on more, more weight. That happened and I did the ride and it was fun. And anyways, and that has emotionally scarred me to the bone and I will never be able to unlive that moment. And I remember in that moment, I told myself, I was like, all right, that's it. This isn't gonna be me. I'm not gonna be a fat dude who can't go on water rides because he's over the weight limit. That's just not, I'm not about that life. Decided in that moment that that's what was gonna happen, but it didn't because I really wish that I could say to you now, you know, the next day when I was on holiday, I went and started working out at the gym, but I didn't, I didn't start running, I didn't do anything. In fact, I continued to put on weight because instead of that motivating me, which it motivated me in the moment, but afterwards I dwelled on it and it depressed me and it made me really upset and I ended up getting worse and I did put more weight on. I got to the start of 2016, so about six months later, and that's when I uploaded the first video to YouTube. Like I'd started this channel about three months prior, and I found a letter that I wrote myself about halfway through the year before, so halfway through 2015. I had written myself a letter saying, you need to stop feeling sorry for yourself, you need to go out, you need to lose weight, you need to get yourself together, you know, you are so much better than this, you're not gonna be the fat dude. That was before this water park experience. So that happened, and the next day I went out and I joined the gym. So it wasn't, the water park and the actual first hand experience that made me do it, that actually made me worse and put on more weight. So at this point I would have been around 120, between 125 and 130 kilos. But it was reliving those experiences later once I'd had time to process it all and kind of deal with it in my own way that I actually decided to do something about it. So I went out and I joined the gym and I decided that I wanted to lose 10 kilos before my leavers dinner, which was in that December. And that takes us to that second video. That second video that you guys saw at the start of this one was a video called I Did It that I posted on the 1st of December, 2016. And I filmed that on the day of my leavers dinner and I had lost 10 kilos in that time. And I was really proud of myself. And you know, as you guys could see, I was like, you know, I'm a changed person because I was. I was legitimately so much happier than I was eight months beforehand. And I was working with a personal trainer. You know, I had accomplished my goal. I'd, I'd set myself a goal, I got worse, I found the note, I got better, and then I bettered myself for the next eight months. Once I'd reached my goal, I plateaued. I went into college, I started a new school, I got a whole heap of brand new friends, and I was loving life. That's the time when I found musical theatre and I kind of found a new love for life again with you know a brand new group of people and I could kind of re-image myself and I could rebrand myself and weight wouldn't be my defining factor anymore because through the end of high school I had become you know one of the fat kids of the grade. I wasn't getting bullied firsthand. I can't say whether or not I was getting bullied behind my back, but that's not an issue because I, if even if I did, it didn't affect me at the time because you know, I was content. I hated myself, but I was content in my life. I think that stems from my acting roots and having outlets like creating YouTube videos, whether they were good or not is irrelevant, but having those outlets and you know, working on my acting and so the fact that I was probably getting bullied behind my back wasn't an issue for me. I went into college and I rebounded myself and I fell in love with life again and I was so happy. I felt like I was a brand new person. You know, I'd lost all this weight, I dyed my hair a ridiculous colour and that was kind of the closing of that weight chapter and I was content in myself, you know, I got my first serious girlfriend and it was all kind of well and good. Then my second massive emotional bombshell hit me, which ironically happened on another holiday. So I went on the trip of a lifetime in September of 2017 with my best friend Mitchell and we went to New Zealand and we traveled all around New Zealand for two and a half weeks with his family. On the second day of being in New Zealand, we bungee jumped and we did a mass the massive canyon swing. Those videos are still some of my favorite videos on my channel. They're not exactly good videos, but 
I love them because of the experience. So if you guys do want to check them out, I'll leave links to the playlist in the description. When you go bungee jumping, I don't know how many of you guys out that have been bungee jumping, but of course they have to weigh you because they have to make sure that the ropes can get you back up and you don't snap the small rope if you're too heavy. So they weighed me. They don't just weigh you and like give you a card or tell you or they put in a system. They weigh you and they write your weight on your hand. The actual number wasn't necessarily the issue. It was a photo where Mitchell and I have got our arms around each other. We've got our hands up like this. And on my hand, there is a big 110. And on his hand is 55. Now, don't get me wrong. It wasn't my weight that was the problem. It wasn't Mitchell's weight that was the problem. It was the fact that there is this photo of my, me and my best friend. And there could have been three exact people in that photo. And the weight between us would have been the same. There was two of my best friend inside of me that dug so deep into my soul because I was like, I am the fat one. Like, M Mitchell was tiny, don't get me wrong. But it wasn't until that moment that I realized how much bigger I was. Like, I was two of him. And that really got to me. And then the kind of part, the second part of this story is we went out in a group of 10 people to the big bungee swing. And the bro goes, all right, Jacob Golding, you're up first. And I was like, what? There's like 10 of us here. Can I not go first? And he was like, no, we have to go in weight order. And out loud, literally, I was the fattest person in the group. To get outed like that in public, it does something to you that you can't quite verbalize and that's the thing with a lot of this story to get outed like that literally felt like I had been shattered into a million pieces and it happened I did the bungee jump it was, it was still to this day it was like the best day of my life I would go and do that whole experience again in a heartbeat like literally if I do this with my camera above all my lights here this is one of those photos literally above the camera this is my bungee jump award Mitchell and I are here from that trip but once again I didn't go and change any like I didn't go out and lose a heap of weight the next day I, in fact, I got worse and I put on all of the weight that I had originally lost. I was back at around 120 kilos. So with all of that happened, it's really random how these things occur because I was on a trip, a weekend away in Melbourne with my sister. I got home on the Sunday night and I was laying in bed and I got sponsored an Instagram ad for a workout plan. And you know, I got sponsored these all the time because I had been looking at like weight loss videos similar to this. So I got these all the time, but there was just something about this certain work workout plan that I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. I had no intention to lose weight. I was like, you know what? I'm just sick of these coming up. I'm just going to buy one and just see what happens. So I did it. And the next day I just started going to the gym. I started counting calories. I started following this plan. It was a 90 day program. And by halfway through this program, I'd lost probably about 25 kilos. I remember the day that I hit 99.9 .9 kilos was literally like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders, like theoretically and physically. The one thing I always wanted was to not be over 100 kilos. And I remember that day I was like, all right, maybe this is my time. I did it for me. And that's the biggest thing. I wasn't out here trying to do it for YouTube. I wasn't filming my progress for a YouTube video. I wasn't, I wasn't doing it to impress a girl. I wasn't doing it to fit in at school. I was halfway through a show season and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to start going to the gym. And you know, I was working out before rehearsals. I was working out after rehearsals at lunchtime at school. I was just doing it with, I wasn't taking people. I wasn't flaunting it on social media. It just kind of happened naturally and it was a really natural thing. For you guys watching that are in a position where you haven't had that experience yet, hearing that probably doesn't motivate you all too much. But I guess my point is that I just want you to know and I promise you that it will happen if you want it to. And that's the thing. I wanted this. I didn't plan for it to happen. When the ball started moving and when I kind of got momentum, it just, it happened. It was a really natural occurrence. So from that point, so from April 2018 to July 2018, I had gone from 120 kilos to about 95. Then from July to September, I had gone down to 75 kilos. I went from 120 kilos to between 75 and 80 kilos. I fluctuate and to that day, I still fluctuate between 75 and 80 kilos. It was a really organic thing for me. And I know that doesn't help you. I know you want me to sit here and tell you that there's some secret recipe to how I lost 45 kilos, but I was going to the gym six times a week. I was counting my calories and eating good food. I was 
was socially distancing, ironic, coronavirus social distancing, I was socially distancing myself from the people who had negative influence on my life. I became a very selfish person in the way that I would only do things that I knew were going to better me. I focused on the things that I loved, like media and YouTube and filmmaking and gym, and, and I started forgetting about all those other things. If you want this to happen for you, you have to be selfish and you have to do it for yourself because if you do it for another person or for, for something else for another reason, it's not going to happen as organically as it should for it to be sustainable. And that was the biggest thing for me. I was doing this really intense workout plan and I was tracking every grape that I put into my mouth and every slice of apple that I ate and every liter of water and every coffee that I drank. Once I started to have this momentum and once I was losing the weight, I was like, okay, how am I going to make this sustainable? Because I knew with the lifestyle that I was that I wanted to lead, going to the gym every day wasn't going to be sustainable and I didn't want to set myself up for failure that if I missed one day, fall out of my entire routine and if I would have one day where I went over the calories that I was meant to eat, then I would go and eat McDonald's for the next week. I made it so once I started to see results and once I started to be comfortable in my regime, I turned it down a bit. It got to about halfway through and I stopped counting calories because I learnt how many calories were in things and I learnt what was an acceptable amount of food to eat as long as I was exercising. And I started to make my workouts. If I missed a day, I could tweak the next day or I could do something at home and I would intentionally miss things. Just build those good habits that I could progress into the future and could actually work into life. So I guess that's my biggest thing. Do it for yourself and be strict on yourself until you have something established and you start seeing results and you get momentum. Once that ball starts rolling, then you will work out what works for you and it'll happen. I promise it will happen if you are determined to make it happen. It's the same as everything in life. You're not gonna get the job you want unless you're determined to get it. You're not gonna get the body that you want unless you're determined to get it. I hate myself that this is what I'm saying to you now because I feel like that person that you saw at the start of the video would have wanted me to tell you that there's some secret click of a button remedy to how it happens and how I did it. There's not. Honestly, I needed someone to sit down in front of the camera and tell me to just get my ass off the couch and do a 10 minute workout in my bedroom to a YouTube video. I needed somebody to tell me that it was okay to not do that as well. I needed someone to just validate that I was okay. So if I can do that for one person, then I feel like this video has accomplished something. And if not, then it can just sit in the oblivion forever. But I know that I've done this and this weight can be lifted off my shoulders, literally, and I can progress with making fun content for you. So I guess the last thing that I want to tackle in this video really quickly is that even though the numbers side of my weight is well below what I ever dreamt of it being, I'm still not happy in my body. I'm st I've still got so much about my body that I want to work on and change. And weight loss is a terrible thing, right? If you are an obese person and you lose weight, and you lose weight fast especially, and you don't lose it through, say, puberty, if you do have to physically lose weight, you are going to end up with parts of your body that you don't like. Like, for me, relatively good torso now, right? But this bottom part of my abdomen. I still have this stubborn fat here. For me, that is, I hate that about myself. I also know that it's okay. And I look back at that person that was at the start of this video and I'm like, he would have dreamt to have this. He would have dreamt to be in the position that I am now, but he also never in a million years imagined that it was going to happen. Be humble in where you are at the moment because it's fine. I just wanted to put that in there for me as well, because I know that I would have wanted to hear this. I just want to say thank you a lot for sitting through and watching and if this has helped you in any way um i am eternally grateful for the opportunity to have given you that help this, this is something i wrote a while ago if you need someone to tell you that you're doing a great job trust me you are doing a phenomenal job but if you need someone to reassure you that it's okay to not be okay right now it is it is 100 okay to be struggling and it's 100 okay to hate yourself because we all do, but just know that it's gonna get better and you have so many people around you to support you because I did, I just couldn't see it, but I'm here. I'm here for you. I needed both of those people in my life when I was going through this and I wanna be that person for you no matter what side of it you're on. I'm literally only, only a message away. If you have any other questions about my weight loss journey, please feel free to DM me or leave a comment down below. And yeah, hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, don't forget to leave it a big thumbs up. If you want to watch another video of mine, click one of the videos down here. Oh my God, this is a fancy new outro. Thanks, Romolo. And yeah, that's all I have for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Love y'all. Bye.
my blood, through my mind, my mind. Oh, oh.